Hello and welcome to your favorite game show, Cash in Trash, where we take our hard-earned money and throw it at this pile of crap over here. I'm your host, Peter the Dumbass, so without further ado, let's get started! Now on the much more serious note, this is going to be a lovely episode where we are going to get the dashboard out and with that finish with the interior and then you are going to see just how expensive this is going to get because I took a sneak peek last time I was here filming and there are quite some surprises. I think many of you are going to rejoice as I might use bits and pieces that are usually not found in the parts store from this car and maybe I will send it out to random subscribers or I'll just think of something in the, in the meantime. Um, there are going to be plenty of nice souvenirs from this build. So I'm going to quickly start removing the dashboard and then you are going to see all the bits and pieces that almost made me cry last time. So here we are starting the dashboard removal. I have to say I started editing the first episode and um, I just want to say thank you for everybody who stayed through because so many ums and a's, it's really ridiculous but I am really working hard on getting a bit more fluent and a bit more lit um, better spoken if that's the right way to say it. Anyways without uh, too much flabbering around. There is a specific sequence to getting the dashboard out. It's really not that difficult. Um, there it is again. I prepared a stencil for myself where I've sketched out the dashboard from the top, front and side views. I, I have an idea of making like a printable sketch for you guys so you can download it, print it out, put it on the cardboard and use it so you can organize your screws. I'm still working on that. I think that's going to be a great way um, to share some of this experience that I'm going through. Other than that, we are going to start by removing side panels over here, then Dash uh, the glove compartment, but you saw me already uh, uh, do the removal of the of the glove compartment in the videos where we changed the speakers. I think I am going to wear the other camera on top of my head. So if you're interested in seeing every single detail, there is going to be probably a extension of this video coming a bit after this video is out where you can see everything that I'm doing from the top of my head.
I really wish it was as fast and as easy as it looked in this camera. If you're going to watch the other video, the longer one, you're going to see just how much struggle I had to go through to get this far. I think the whole dash is now unbolted, every single one of them. We are ready to pull this thing out. It is much easier if you have another person with you. Since I don't, I'm going to struggle a little bit more. But that's fine, that's what I signed up for. Make sure that every cable is free, um, that there is nothing that's going to stuck halfway through. But let's face it, it's probably going to be something. So I'm just going to go through and start removing the dashboard. Make sure that, like I said, that it, it is free. Uh, try to get... There is a couple of... Okay, there is, a, there is a cable on that side that was... Stuck onto the... Oh, both sides actually, both sides. There is a cable. Underneath it looks okay. I don't know. Oh, I forgot this one. I struggled with this one on the other side because the locking pin for... Is it a temperature sensor or something? Was the other way around, so we couldn't get it out. But... Oh! Looks really good so far. It is really important to do this. Just to um, pull the, the leather over the steering knob because it is probably going to get scratched other way if you don't do that. Let me just go around again and okay one person oh dash and we'll take a look see what's what got stuck there are a couple of cables that are stuck make sure they are free all right why are they not free? I don't know. Because you have to pay for them, probably. Most importantly, don't rush anything. I am rushing it a bit right now, simply because I'm tired, which is no excuse. Okay. Looks good, looks good. Now, this is not the lightest of I think there is a cable stuck there. This is not the lightest of the dashboards. So, like I said, the second person would be... Huh? Oh, yes. The cable for the tweaker speaker. Okay, great. Now we can move it. There's always a cable that's going to get stuck. So, like so, what is it now? Another cable, okay, out, yes. The shifter, there we are, there. It got caught um, onto the shifter knob, but I managed not to damage it. I just need a breather for a second. And I need to be really careful because there are glass pieces on this dashboard. So I need to take a really great care and vacuum the whole car once I get, get this thing out and once the windshield is removed. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the whole dash, close the door and put it over here for now. There we go. Yeah, we got it. We got it. It's out. It's out. The whole one 
damaged dashboard. Took a lot of work. Um, it was fun, I have to say. I didn't expect this to be this hard because um, it wasn't completely unknown to me how to do it still. It took me quite some time. So I'm going to make a small pause here in the whole process before I start working on the front end of the car because as you probably saw the interior is completely stripped out. We might strip the flooring as well but that's it and then we are going to start working on the front. For you it's going to be the same video for me most probably the next day or next opportunity to film but yeah very happy with the result so far. As promised I'm going to use my stencil that I've created to poke all of the screws for the dashboard so that I know exactly where every single one of them go and I don't know just how much you can see, probably not much, but top view, there is two that go in the corner, there is one that goes in the middle, there are two on the sides, this one and the other one, there is this one, that's this one. Um, what I've realized is that this isn't quite the most accurate one so I'm going to go through the video and everything I did once again and then check if um, I could have done better. But there is these two that hold the bracket for instrument cluster. Oh yeah, th this one is from the instrument cluster. This is this one over here and then behind the, the instrument cluster we have another one and this is the only one this one over here that is slightly different, don't know why. And then we have, then we have, then we have two of them over here. And I have only one screw, which means probably I've either already brought some of the screws back to the storage or I did something wrong. I am going to check two times, three times, but this is really, really helpful. And it helps you when returning everything back to its original position to know whether you forgot anything or didn't. So that's it for me for this time. Like I said, this is going to be somewhat middle of the video as I'm going to continue filming the episode 3 and then we'll see how far we can go. Same video for you, next day for me or a couple of days later than where we stopped filming last time. Okay, okay, don't panic. This over here, haven't changed anything other than that. I had a friend who came, stopped by to help me build this thing so I can pull the engine out of the car, hopefully. We'll see about that. Um, and this is going to be a breaking point in this build because I know the engine is damaged. We just don't know how much damage it has uh, sustained. Which means that if I find out more than I expected to find, which let's face it, it's going to be, um, it is going to tell us whether this build is going to be rentable or not. Anyways, I'm really excited to get started working on stripping the front part out. Uh, we saw already in this video and previous two videos that we stripped out everything from the interior. What I did on the small camera, I just um, removed the speakers, door speakers, because you know they are really exposed and I don't want to risk getting them damaged in the process of uh, repairing the body. Other than that, I am quickly now going to go ahead and remove the carpet from the car, that's what I forgot. And then you will see me trying to uh, pull, put this thing together with the 
ratcheting hoist, I think that's the word. And then we are going to start stripping the, apart everything in the front, see what's what, see how much of it has been damaged and see just how easy it's going to be to remove the engine. After just a couple of minutes of easy peasy work, no, it wasn't. We got the floor out or carpet or yeah, whatever. It is out, it is properly dirty. So I'm going to make sure to bring this somewhere where I can clean it, make it smell nice, make it fresh and brand new, almost like. And what does this mean for us? It, that means that we can finally start working on the front of the car. I'm going to start with removing the hood, then I'm going to try to uh, set this thing up so we can hoist the engine, because uh, the both of the engine mounts are broken, so the engine sits somewhat uh, unsecure in the, in the car right now, and I want to make sure that it stays in a position so we can, we can pull it out. All right got the carpet on the side, like I said, starting with the hood. The plan is get the hood out and about, make sure the engine is on the hoist and then we are going to slowly uh, get all of the parts out that are free so we can assess the damage as best as we can. And fingers crossed this is the point where we find out just how expensive this thing is going to get and if it's even wor worth repairing and of course um, the extent of the damage on the body behind the engine. So I'm going to start and you are going to enjoy watching me. The moment we've all been waiting for, I'm going to start stripping out the engine, the front compartment, the engine compartment. You saw me take the hood off and some of the accessories around the hood, windshield wipers and everything because of course the windshield needs to go out as well. So now I'm going to start slowly going from what's known to me already, all of the plastic pieces, the air filter housing and everything I can reach from here. I'm going to strip out, lay all, the, all of the parts over there for now and then we can see just how much of a damage this car has sustained and what we can save, what we cannot save. So uh, sit back, relax and enjoy stripping out this engine with me.
Okay, so we are halfway through. Please don't mind the hoist that I've just built. I built it off camera because, you know, safety issues, concerns. Anyways, I'm going to have to shake you a little bit right now because I'm going to get you off the stand. Even though I don't like it, I prefer stable content. Anyways, as you can see, this is one part of an engine mount. This rubber piece is supposed to be in here. So this engine mount has decided to separate um, itself. And obviously this is why the engine sits as it, it does. Of course we have same issue on the other side. So the gearbox mount is also separated into two pieces. And what I've just realized that it has broken the housing of the oil filter for the gearbox. So all in all, it doesn't look great. And you probably are telling right now, okay, so if the both of the mounts for the engine are broken, how is the engine sitting? I'm asking myself the very same question and that is why I want to get the engine lifted as soon as possible because I don't know if it could just slip down at any moment and cause even more damage from underneath, which we still are yet to check. So I'm going to go ahead and try to support the engine on the hoist or whatever this thing is called. And then uh, I'm going to com continue working on the front part of the engine. Oh, how the pieces went flying. Hope you saw that. Um, yeah, we made a major step forward. We removed the crash bar. It wasn't under a lot of tension. I expected it to just swing and kill me on the way out. It didn't, however, so lucky me. What we can see so far, besides the Compre the sorry excuse for an air conditioning express, uh, compressor. Quite a lot of damage occurred. Whoa, this is really heavy. Uh, I will be able to get all of those things out. Next step is to remove, separate the radi radi radiator pack from the car and then maybe even try to lift the engine or just free all of the space around the engine so we can swing the engine out and maybe see what's what and what's damaged. This is not going to look good. So let's continue working on the car. I had to use every 
tool in my toolbox to get this ridiculous hose connector off of the radiator. So now that the radiator pack is removed, why am I doing this without my gloves? No idea. Now that the radiator pack is removed, we can clearly see just how well it kissed the fans. I know that's not allowed. And yeah, there is absolutely not a single usable piece left on this radiator pack. Maybe these mounting points. I know they are expensive from Audi, so I'll try to salvage anything possible. The intercooler is now opened on one side, so you can clearly see through it. Anyways, um, something else that's really bothering me is the air conditioning lines are damaged and those are aluminium. So I know that, that this is going to, to be one more very expensive trip to Audi. So I'm going to move on, fully motivated, motivated. Fully motivated. I think I'm going to remove the broken engine mounts right now. It has taken all of the energy out of me to get this far. So I'm going to call it for this time, this episode, and we are going to continue next week where we will be pulling the engine completely out. There are a couple of good and a couple of bad news that I've seen so far. The left hand side isn't damaged as much. The right hand side, I think we will have to replace almost everything, but I'm going to have a full image when I remove the wheel liner and the engine itself. Until then, stay tuned for the next episode because I have seen some bad things under the engine. So thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one. Bye.